Welcome back to Definitely Not Definitive. I'm Ken. And I'm Bethany. And we're just a rowdy couple in love that loves Reagnus and Ruby. Yes, we do. So this is volume six, episode three. Gonna find out about Salem and Oz and oh, can't wait for this episode. Yeah, this is gonna be big. Yes, it is. If you want all of our reactions to Ruby, we have a playlist in the description of this video. Also got a link to Patreon where you can get early ad-free access. We're a month ahead on our reactions. Yep. Let's do this. Let's do it. I love Nora and Ren. Yeah. No hope, no path. But we cannot dream to death. So we cannot wait. Trust the way we're made. The spell. Drinking and then falling into like yeah. the hands of the gram. Yeah, I don't like that. Yeah. That hat, the bowler's hat. Didn't yeah. it look like uh, Torchwick, the guy like from that Ruby had killed? Um, he looked like Clockwork Orange. Oh, good spot, handsome. I hadn't paid attention to the hat before. I mean, I'm pretty sure he's dead. He's not coming back, but. Locked away by her cruel father, Salem was a girl who desired but one thing, freedom. She lived in a time when kings and their kingdoms were plentiful, when men and women were capable of greatness, and magic was a gift from the gods that all could wield. And yet there she sat within her tower. Damn. Until one day, a legendary hero came to brave the challenges within the tower's walls. The people of the lands knew him, as Ozma. Oh, wow. Unlike those who had come before, this warrior was not driven by the prize of the young maiden's hand. He thought only for righteousness, and his pure heart and courageous soul prevailed. They escaped the wretched fortress. And yet, something bound them together. Ozma had been ready to give his life for justice countless times, but now saw a woman worth saving it for. And Salem, to her surprise, found her freedom not in the outside world she had yearned for, but in the eyes of the man that had saved her. So, where should we go now? Wherever you'd like. Bang. The two fell deeply in love, planned adventures around the world, and lived happily ever after. <laughs> For like a century. Or at least, that's what should have been. Ozma, the infallible hero of legend, <laughs> fell ill. And where all of the beasts and blades of the world had fallen short, a single sickness prevailed. <laughs> Gods let this happen. The gods, brothers of light and darkness, creation and destruction. Salem prayed they would see the injustice that had befallen her love and make things right. The domain of light was a sacred place. It was here the elder brother dwelled beside his fountain of life and creation. It was here where mankind would fall to ruin. Fall to ruin? I think that's what she said. That looks awfully a lot like the tree that... 
they visited last half, or last season. Understand your pain, but you demand of me that which I cannot make so. Life and death are part of a delicate balance. So, you won't do it then? To disrupt the cycle of. Th that's not fair! That's not fair! Let him rest. No. Hmm. The God of Darkness. None Deal dare devil. to enter his home as men knew what monstrosities emerged from his blackened pools of annihilation. Damn, blackened And so you must damage. understand yeah. the Dark Lord's surprise when he found a lone woman kneeling before him. So she gave up her soul for us. Salem understood it well. She told him of her loss and professed that she knew only he could answer her prayers, all while careful to make no mention of his elder. Rise, child, and let your faith in me be rewarded. So she's the reason Osborn keeps coming back. Mm -hmm. Where am I? It's okay. Everything's going to be okay. Uh oh. What have you done? I have done what I please, brother. You may bask in the powers of creation, but you do not own them. This is not creation. Do not lecture me. I will do what I must to maintain order. No! No! What did you do? Bring him back! You dare enter my domain and show such disrespect! Ozma! I am abiding by the oh rules God. we agreed upon. Rules that I know has? work ever in your favor. And yet the one mortal comes to pray at my feet before your own, so do your right to lay your judgment upon me. Let this one's dragon. Differences, but I have not come here with the aim to control you. The same, however, cannot be said for her. Mm. This woman came to you only after I denied her pleas. Pleas that would have disrupted the balance that you and I created. Together. Then it seems I owe you an apology. Allow me to correct my mistake. No! Give him back to me! Give him back! Selfishness and arrogance have led you astray. What did you do to me? I have made you immortal. Immortal? You cannot die. 
You cannot be with your beloved. So long as this world turns, you shall walk its face. You must learn the importance of life and death. Only then may you rest. Salem was a prisoner once again. Harsh. Her fruitless attempts to reunite with Ozma eventually became nothing more than acts of spite and defiance against the gods. But perhaps the gods were not as powerful as they seemed. She had lied to them, turned them against one another. They were fallible. If she were to turn humanity against light and darkness, she could rid herself of their curse. Or at the very least, she could make them suffer. <coughs> Salem traveled from one kingdom to another, telling tales of how she stole immortality from the gods, welcomed any swordsman to cut her down, and <laughs> demonstrated her powers. With the kings and queens in awe, she pulled them deeper into her scheme. She painted them pictures of a time when they would no longer have to watch their loved ones wither and die, when they could claim the powers of their creators for themselves, and in turn perfect their own design. All they needed to do was destroy their old masters. The gods had hoped that Salem would learn from her eternal curse, and she did. She learned that the hearts of men are easily swayed. Hmm. Who has led you down this path? Your magic My shit. Own gift to them, used against me. Massacre, build a new army. You do not understand. There is no one left. You are all that remains of humanity. This planet was a beautiful experiment, but it is merely a remnant of what it once was. We will learn from this failure. I hope that you will learn from yours. No! You can't leave! You can't leave! Come back! Still demanding things of your creators. Oh! Okay. That's how the moon gets fucked up. Salem was alone. She cursed the gods. She cursed the universe. She cursed everything. Everything but herself. She wandered the face of the planet, awaiting a death that would never come. Until fate led her back to the land of darkness. This was it. This had to be it. The Brothers Grimm, the pools of black that continued to give rise to horrific nightmares. If the Fountain of Life granted her immortality, then surely the pools of Grimm would finally take it away. She was wrong. This force of pure destruction could not destroy a being of infinite life. Instead, it created a being of infinite life with a desire for pure destruction. Ooh. And in time, she would find her adversary.
am I? We are between realms. I'm afraid a tragedy has befallen your home at the hands of my brother. We have chosen to depart this world, but in our absence, I would like to offer you the chance to return to it. I don't understand. Mankind is no more, yet your world remains, and in time, your kind will grow to walk its face once again. However, without our presence, they will be but a fraction of what they once were. Creation, destruction, choice, and knowledge were the ideals upon Relics. which humanity was made. Now, I leave them behind with the hope that you may learn to remake yourselves. If brought together, these four relics will summon my brother and I back to your world, and humanity will be judged. If your kind has learned to live in harmony with one another and set aside their differences, then we shall once again live among you, and humanity will be made whole again. Oh, but if screwed. your kind <laughs> is unchanged, if you demand our blessings while still fighting amongst yourselves, then man will be found irredeemable, and your world will be wiped from existence. Until your task is complete, you will reincarnate, but in a manner that ensures you are never alone. I'm sorry, but that world just isn't as dear to me without her. If I may, I'd rather return to the afterlife to see Salem. You will not find her there. You mean, she isn't gone? Salem lives, but the woman you hold dear in your memories is gone. Heed this warning. Where you seek comfort, you will only find pain. So, will you- I'll do it. Very well. Our creation rests within your hands. And so, Ozma was reborn. <gasps> Where am I? in a world completely unfamiliar to him. Cities looked different. Creatures known as the Faunus bore fangs and claws and were locked away in cages. And without the blessing of the gods, no one could perform magic like mankind was once capable of. No one but himself and a woman known as the Witch. Ooh. During his years of travel, he heard the same frightened whispers that spoke of a terrifying sorceress who commanded dark powers in the wilds among the beasts and monsters. Ozma was convinced that this witch was Salem and decided he needed to see what she had become. Call it magic, or call it something stronger. But in that moment, the two knew exactly who it was that stood before them. What do we do now? Whatever we like. As Salem and Ozma recounted the events which had brought them back together, each withheld parts of their story. Salem, fearing Ozma would reject her, blamed the end of the world on the gods. Ozma, still unsure of where the truth lay, kept his task and the relics a secret. Though time passed and all seemed well, Ozma's conversation with the God of Light still lingered in his mind. He had found happiness, but humanity seemed more divided than ever before. 
Are you surprised? This world is quite literally godless. These humans have no one to guide them. Perhaps that's all they need. What are you saying? We could become the gods of this world. Our powers surpass all others. Our souls transcend death. We can mold these lands into whatever we want. What you want. Create the paradise that the old gods could not. The hearts of men are easily swayed. <laughs> the two amassed a following. That following grew into a prosperous kingdom. And at the head of that kingdom blossomed a family. What? So those are the, the maidens? maidens? Are we sure this is right? <laughs> You said we needed to bring humanity together. In order to do that, we have to spread our word and destroy those who will deny it. Oh. Yeah. What are we doing? <gasps> this isn't what he asked of me. What did you say? Mother! Father! Look! It was a miracle. Their children could perform magic. But what should have been a joyous occasion was short-lived. Ozma told Salem everything. The true reason the God of Light had brought him back. The relics that lay scattered around the world. And the day of judgment he had been told to prepare for. Don't you see? None of that matters anymore. Why spend our lives trying to redeem these humans when we can replace them with what they could never be? Mommy? Sneaking out with the kids, uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> Thus began a long and painful cycle of death and rebirth for Ozma. Some lives were spent in mourning. Many were spent attempting to forget it all. But no matter what, his mind would eventually turn back to the task he had been burdened with. And as the centuries went on, Ozma began to learn the importance of living with the souls with which he had been paired. But no matter where or how he lived, her presence was always felt. If humanity were ever to stand a chance of being united, one thing was clear. He had to destroy Salem. Knowing he could never rid the world of her through any mortal means, Ozma sought out the power of the relics. Armed with my knowledge, he believed he could fulfill his promise to the God of Light. 
Where are the other relics? He asked me his questions. What powers do they possess? And though I gave him my answers... How do I destroy Salem? Not all of them were to his liking. You can't. Well, shit. Okay, so we can't destroy her. You have to take her power away. Mm -hmm. Oh. Flew by. What'd you think? We knew Oz was hiding something. I I was not expecting that. No. Ah, I, mean, I, I like have so many thoughts buzzing through my head right now. I think what I'm fixated on right now is, so he's asked the questions, where are the relics? What powers do they have? Mm -hmm. How do I destroy Salem? The answer to the last one is you can't. So then that begs a whole new set of questions, mm -hmm. which is, is you can't, you collectively, like no one can, mm -hmm. or is you can't, you, Ozpin, can't. And therefore it has ah. to be another person. Good call, um, good distinction. So like, I instantly have that follow-up question. Um, you know, and then the other thing is if if you can't actually destroy her because she is immortal, um, how do you take all her power from her? How do you make her no longer this force for evil in the world? How do you take how do you strip her of that? Good questions. Uh I don't think that this was like I mean, I don't think Oz comes across as bad in this. Um, you know, he said that like he kind of created Salem. Um and I guess in a roundabout way, he, you know, he did like inadvertently, um, like it wasn't like it was his death and their love and um, her not being able to like, you know, her stubbornness of not let, wanting to let him go. Um, you know, I mean, it's, 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 a little, it's a little romantic there. All right. She loves him so much. She, she doesn't want to live without him. Um, and she's willing even to piss off the gods. Uh, what I don't understand is the gods killed all humanity, right? That one guy that he's like, you're gonna be the last one. Yeah. So how'd they get back? Uh, I mean, he said that they would kind of like respawn on the earth and then like the meteors from the moon come crashing down. So I don't know. I think we're supposed to just like assume the moment of like the creation event takes place again. And Okay. All right. So, I mean, I guess in the same sense of like how humans came to be and, you know, now. So how long did she, was she walking on the earth before she had to have like evolution happen again for humans to, to come about? Um, that's uh to make you know go go a little bit crazy um i don't know like it's wrong like i don't completely blame salem <laughs> no i think they did a really good job with this because so i i don't think ozpin comes across badly i think this would no. be a great question for ruby to ask because i think it's going to make them both understand ozpin on a much deeper level mm -hmm. and understand their enemy and you have to understand, you have to know know thy enemy if you are mm -hmm. going to succeed because otherwise you you don't have a chance. Um, so this is actually incredibly helpful for all of them. And Ozpin doesn't come across as a bad guy, but he comes across as, as knowing a hell of a lot more than he ever shared with them. Like that is the one area in which he comes across badly because like he had a shit ton of knowledge, very useful knowledge. And that's what I'm wondering, like, why he didn't want to share that knowledge. Because, like, I always thought that he didn't want to share the knowledge because he thought, like, you know, it could be misinterpreted in a way that, you know, would make you not trust him and not want to, like, you know, follow him and believe in him and um, would, like, or, like, in the wrong hands could be used for evil. And I guess, I mean, knowing that if you get all the relics together, like, if you want to destroy the world and you want to destroy humanity, then, yeah, you get all the relics together and you call the gods and to have them judge knowing that they're going to fail and then that's going to wipe out humanity. Like if that's your goal, I guess, that's why you want to want to hide that information. But I, I couldn't see like him thinking that anybody like on Team Ruby or whatever like has that goal. So I'm just curious as to like, I'm trying to think of, okay, what in there would be something that he would want to hide from, from people uh, to not like, yeah. So I don't know. You've never been in a bad relationship, have you? No, never. And therein lies the difference. Okay. 
when you've been in a bad relationship, even though Ozpin wasn't a bad guy in it, you're still not proud of it. I mean, he put himself out there as a god. He Mm. went to be worshipped. I mean, and yes, it was all at Salem's urging and her encouragement. And sure, it was her idea, but like, he didn't stand up to it. He went along with it. They got rich and lived in a palace being worshipped as gods. Well, they kind of were gods in that in that time period, in that world. I mean, they would be gods now, that, that those abilities and what they have. Um, and, I mean, until Salem said... But here's the thing. Like, okay, so why are they worse gods than the other gods that created everything? Like, why should those other gods be in charge and not Salem and, and Oz? Because, like, they created humanity and their image and you know like they said themselves like they just hadn't gone well and then they just completely wiped out all of humanity that's what salem wanted to do she wanted to wipe out humanity or whatever and create it in, in their own image so like she just liked them like they're no bad like i don't know so <laughs> like that's a good problem where i'm at like I, I don't think she's that bad you can ha- i mean you we definitely can have that <laughs> philosophical discussion for sure but i'm just saying from ozpin's perspective and the person he is looking back on this from I don't think from his perspective it's something to be proud of. Okay, yeah, I mean, and so I think from like if you've ever been in a bad relationship, even if you haven't been the worst person in it, yeah. you're still not proud of that time period that you spent in that relationship, or the impact it may have had on you, or the influence that that person may have had on you. Okay. I think that's where Ozpin is. Is like he's not the worst person on earth, but like this is not a happy chapter or or centuries worth of chapters in his life that he's very eager to share with other people. Oh yeah, get not wanting to bring it up. I mean, you know, uh, any sort of trauma in in, in your past just with with anybody, um, (coughs) you know, and like, you know, it's not that he even owes it to Ruby and the gang and and everyone else to to tell them anything, tell them any of this. Like he doesn't- Though they feel he does. He doesn't, well, it's a different, like here's the thing. It's like, he doesn't have to tell them that, but, at the same time, they don't have to have to follow him. And like, if, like if he wants their if they wants their help again, it's like about about trusting people. It's like okay, like if he's like I can get any huntsman to come come with me and join my crew, and like we can save the world. Like I don't need you all. Like you're really talented, but I don't need you. Okay, like you know that's his prerogative. That's like his mission. Like you know he's on uh, he, he's literally on a mission from God. Uh, so that's you know he's he's free to do that if he wants to. But if he wants to if he wants Ruby and and, and the crew and he wants um, them to help, then that, that that comes the point where okay that is where you you've been told that if you withhold information, you know. We're like, you know, we're not gonna trust you. We might, we might not follow you anymore. So like, you know the consequences of your actions now. And then now it's up to you of whether or not like what matters more to you, like bringing up this trauma in this past uh, and, and, and trusting them with it or losing these people um, as part of your um, saving the world crew. So, you know, it's like, that's what you get. That, that's what you have to weigh. That's why like, some of the decisions that I had for Oz, like withholding certain information, I'm like, that was a stupid thing to withhold that, that information. Like, cause now you've lost their trust. And like, you, that was like this, I could understand, like not wanting to bring this up. And like, even though he doesn't look bad, like I can understand, like you said, the trauma of it all and not and being painful. proud of it and pain. I can understand not wanting to, not wanting to offer this up freely uh, and trying to hold on to it as much as possible. But then, and that's why I was saying last time, I'm like, you know, he was stupid with the lies they withheld. And like, again, I wasn't justifying that, like, he should be withholding holding information. But, you know, you, you pick and choose your battles. Yeah. And, you know, I think, I think with Ozpin, I get not wanting to revisit this. But also, like, I feel like within The Lost Fable, we just got the answers. Mm. I don't know what they are yet. Like, I don't <laughs> I don't have the necessary knowledge to piece it together or have the context, but I yeah. feel like within this history, therein lies the solution for the future. Somebody with just an immense amount of humanity and empathy like Ruby mm-hmm. is probably going to be the person who's able to piece it together um, because Ozpin's going to be too close to it and, you know... I think Weiss and and Yang and Blake can all help, but Ruby's just always been that person who, I think more so than anyone, has been able to see well outside of herself to 
to have the perspectives of those around her or the people within the conflict or the problem that she's trying to solve. I am very curious. So Ozpin's trying to sneak out of the palace in the middle of the night with the children, the spring maidens, the little girls. Yeah. A fight ensues. What happened to those little girls? I mean, we know we know the spring maidens now. They're like this life force that gets mm -hmm. passed on and on. But like they were just children then. One of them had come into their powers. We don't know if they all had come into their powers yet or, or you know, certainly weren't old enough to have an idea of how it worked because that all happened really fast. So what happened to the kids? Well, it's so it's so interesting, the fact that he's well, he said that. One, when he talks about how he created the spring ma maidens, we thought it was like some like sort of like witchcraft or something yeah. like that. Like he he created it like no, he did the old fashioned way. Good old fashioned way. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so I like that reveal. Um, and also he talked about how he had like basically imbued them with his power. So like before he's dying there, he like and like yes, like he like they already had some access to magic. Obviously, uh, we, we we saw that. So they had like some of that some of that power. At least um, one of them did. We don't yeah. know if they all did. Um, but. Since they can reincarnate like him, I imagine like, you know, like somehow before Salem killed him, he was able to like maybe infuse him with more of his power. Well, now that's an interesting question too that just popped into my brain. What? They can reincarnate. Mm -hmm. So when they reincarnate like Ozpin, do they have all their memories of all their past lives? In other words, when Ozpin was going to give Pyrrha the Spring Maiden's power, mm. was he going to give her access to all this knowledge of all that had happened between him and Salem? Was she going to be a um, fully informed person about all of this then? But if that happened, then wouldn't Raven have all that information? And um, yes, and now she Cin and now Cinder. They and should. Cinder didn't seem to know, like you know, she wasn't calling Salem mommy or anything like that. Um, <laughs> so. <laughs> I don't feel like it works the same way as as with Oz, where they have their where they the full um, history of yeah, everything. The, yeah. Okay. Where it's I think it's more of like I don't know an essence and a power than it is necessarily a spiritual thing. Okay. Person. That just came. I mean, because I was just like, wow, that. Like, if that were the case, which yeah. I think you're probably right, it's not going off of Raven and Cinder, but. That makes it even a bigger deal, like him choosing Pyrrha mm -hmm. and, and trusting her and investing her with this this selection, which I think he was he absolutely chose the right person. So I'm, I'm not questioning that at all. But I'm just saying, like, it it becomes a bigger deal, especially if it brings with it the knowledge of the secret that he has mm -hmm. hidden from everybody else. I had thought for a second. I was like, oh, well, I mean, they don't necessarily need to share the 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 wheel with with the person that they're controlling. I mean, Ospin does that with Oscar or whatever, but there's nothing that's saying that like, you know, Oscar wasn't like all of a sudden aware that someone was in his head. Like someone just started talking in his head. It's like he was aware that when Ospin yeah. took, took a, uh, entered his, his body um, when their souls merged or whatever. <coughs> but then I thought, oh, well, if they were capable of that, then wouldn't like the kids have taken over Raven or Cinder at some point and like, you know, when they see, saw Oz and then been like, oh, you know. But I, I don't know. So I I don't think that that's the case. I think that they are separate and they can't uh, recall any past events. Something also and another, and because this is just making me see particularly that chapter of Ruby so differently now. Even if that doesn't happen, the fact of the matter is the Spring Maiden still was Ozpin's child. Like I would think even with all of these lives and different lives that they've lived and stuff, like I, I still feel like you would feel a connection to the spring maiden as your child and like a, a it's all made it's like spring fall winter yeah 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 but like because he had to have he needed to have the transfer of pira or of the spring maiden to pira which like really has to come from them being the last person i think of mm -hmm. or of killing them so like i'm just thinking of like all those moments now it's it's so much bigger when you think of like the whole time that is the spirit of ozpin's child I, I am glad that he he chose Pyrrha, and I I would have liked to have seen that. I think that would have been a really we good all choice. would have liked to have seen that one, yes. but uh, sadly sadly not. Um, Freaking Cinder. Yeah, yeah. I'm intensely curious as to the fallout from this and how everybody's going mm -hmm. to to handle it. Um, you know, Weiss looked just so sad mm -hmm. seeing the story unfold. So did Ruby. Um, 
Blake's expression was a little bit tougher to read, and Yang looked a little bit pissed off. <laughs> um, which I think would sort of be in line with where they're at in their journeys and yeah. sort of like how they, essentially how they felt coming into this in the first place. But I will be very curious to see what the fallout is and how they react after being fully informed. I mean, because this is this is a pretty earth shattering moment in the world of Ruby. Yeah. Let us know what you thought about this down below in the comments. And if you want early ad free access, we're a month ahead on Patreon. There's a link in the description of this video to take you there. And we also have a playlist in the description of this video. Yep. Thanks so much for checking out our reaction for Ruby Volume 6, Episode 3, but just keep in mind. That our reaction is definitely not definitive.